what I'm going to talk about today there you go, is uh, why you now need a digital aspect to your business. What are the top five marketing trends that are working in 2020? And to take that theme of longevity, why longevity should be your goal for the next three to five years. So winter is coming. I don't know how many Game of Thrones we have, but uh, can anybody tell me how long winter lasted in the Game of Thrones? Six seasons. Six seasons. Okay, I thought it was something like 12 years, but I actually had no idea. But hopefully we're not going to see that length of time. But if you look at, um, there's many different indicators, uh, but uh, this is just one that I show. And this one was uh, actually in 2000, March 2019. It was showing you that we were heading towards that uh, indicator that shows that recession is on its way and I believe the ch Chancellor of the Exchequer uh, confirmed that yesterday in, um, in one of his announcements. So just on that uh, rather pessimistic term, I thought I would um, explain why we need to have um, a digital aspect to our business and why we need to make longevity as our theme uh, from now on. Now, I use the Japanese symbol for longevity because I think the Japanese have a very uh, interesting view about, uh, about growth and longevity. If you go to Japan, you'll find that there are no, uh, no old buildings, there's no ruins, because every time something becomes obsolete or it gets, to, uh, it gets outdated, they actually pull it down and build build a new one. So this is about the fifth uh, reincarnation or regeneration, should I say, of this particular building. Whereas in Europe, we tend to leave them to turn out like this, uh, which is actually not much good to anyone other than a few attracting a few tourists to, uh, to come and walk around. And I noticed that already in the uh, family business practice, we're seeing, uh, seeing people uh, changing their businesses. I think um, Sanjay is a good example where he had um, a quite an expensive product that he offered, which was face to face, and he reinvented it and uh, to something that he could then run, uh, run online. And others, um, I myself have done the same thing. And it's about saying, it's we can't leave our businesses to look like this. We really need to regenerate them so that they're bright and shiny and new and they're attractive to people for different reasons. So why do you need a digital aspect to your business? Well, the world's changed, as we all know. Uh, the um, the we need to find a wider audience. And the only real way of doing that is to go in <clears throat> digital. Also, there's different behaviors that we're seeing. Uh, people are more aware of their time and, their co and are looking for cost savings. So rather than attending uh, um, events or um, meetings or whatever that uh, take both time and petrol and, and such like, they're actually looking for that online presence. It also does give us that competitive edge and basically over the next three to five years, a digital presence will actually mean survival. Now, I've picked out some of the um, largest companies that are well known, but all of these actually took a, uh, an industry and they took it digital. Um, obviously, Amazon's the biggest example uh, with um, disrupting the shopping market. The, I mean, even 10 years ago, most of us, uh, or five years ago, most of us booked our flights and our holidays um, it, with the travel agents where we'll do that online. Dell, for at least 20 years, have um, allowed you to order your laptops, your computers mm -hmm. online. 
um, and I won't go through all the rest of them, but I will just bring up one, which is team up. And this is something I'm working with a client at the moment who is a fitness instructor, and he's actually looking to take uh, his fitness in, uh, his fitness knowledge online and using a product like Team Up to actually uh, create virtual rooms for other fitness instructors to book uh, to book through. So he's actually he's a bit like an Airbnb, but for uh, uh, personal training and uh, and small teams. So all of these companies they started small. They started Airbnb started with about three or four. Um, uh, rooms and look where they've all grown so you know these are some examples of companies that recognize the power of digital uh, quite a long time ago so how do you add a digital aspect to your business well uh, the best place is to start is to ask yourself if you were starting your business today what would it look like in today's world and, and what you know is happening now? Not what you'd like to happen in the future or what's happened in the past, but what's happening now. And it's about looking for simplicity, something that's quite harmonious um, and something that will give you opportunities to expand into different areas, especially partners. So to add um, to your business, you might want to ask your customers, your friends, this networking group or others that you belong to, what works for them? What do they like and what do they need now? Uh, there's also research. Uh, see what is working for other businesses. This is what we're doing with my client, with the fitness industry. We're looking at uh, what other businesses have done, not necessarily in the fitness. Um, that's why we've, we're looking at Airbnb. Um, as an example, how did they grow? Uh, and then leveraging off these existing platforms. It's not about building your own. Uh, that's why I mentioned Team Up. And it's also connecting with others who are already digital. So you may not, you may not create your own business. You may join uh, a group that's already there. You may become um, uh, part, of, part of another group in, in some form or another. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's about finding a way to be highly automated, but still offer that personal service and to tap into the gig economy. You can also get, insistence, uh, get assistance from others who can help you recreate or regenerate your business. And all of that may require you to reset, relaunch and reskill. Now, I'm going to put in a little bit of a, um, uh, an advert here. If you do want help regenerating your business, Peter and I are going to be running 10 weekly sessions. They're 72 minutes each, and they start on the 18th of September. And we, we, after a long discussion, we decided that regenerate your business was the right term because it's a bit like Doctor Who, who has his old knowledge. He has his old experiences, but he changes his face. He changes who he is. Um, every so often. And that's what we need to do uh, going into this recession or depression. How am I doing for time, Peter? You're fine. Carry on. Just take it okay. easy. But if you are looking to, uh, to go digital and you're looking for a wider market, uh, and I can give you examples of people who I've been working with recently, a uh, gentleman in, Aust in um, New Zealand, who now has, uh, who runs a training company, who now has uh, clients in India and Thailand. Uh, it's, but it's about marketing. We can all be the best um, kept secrets. So we've got to actually attract uh, our new customers. And I don't know about you, but I'm finding that the way that I'm being marketed to has changed. Uh, adverts are not working for me anymore. It's uh, it's about I, I need some trust in the person. How many of you uh, have uh, been onto LinkedIn and you get a um, connection request, and the moment you say yes, you get flooded with you know buy me, buy me, buy me, and uh, can I can I call you and tell you all about me? That's not working today, but there is a um, there is a basically a value process that is working, and it's for, it's about first of all attracting followers. So you know we 
many of us are doing um, regular posts on LinkedIn and it feels like we're not getting anywhere, but actually we are because we're actually attracting attention. And I'm finding, for instance, that I'm getting more and more connection requests the more I post. We, it's then about a community. And I think the family business practice is the best example of that communi community because we're, we're prepared to give, to, give us, to give our time. You know, that's what we're doing here today. And once, once you've got people's time, you, you, um, they will then start to trust you. And, uh, and I'm not just talking about the family business practice, I'm talking about the people within the practice. For instance, I needed some insurance the other day. So, you know, who, who was my first choice? James Godsell. You know, that's where I've now got trust. So, I, you know, I'll make a decision and then I, I became his customer. And uh, once you become, once, you know, you have customers, if you provide them that personal service, then they become your raving fans and it starts all over again. It's, it's like um, it's like the water system um, or the, you know, the weather system where it, gather, it gathers and gathers and then you start with that rain. So you start with the followers again. So marketing in 2020 is all about building that trust. And yet we're in it for the long game. But there are some um, some particular trends that are working um, quite well now, and that is that as you get in get people into a community, you um, you can build that trust through various things like assessments. Uh, people love assessments, you know, whether they're serious, more serious business related ones or just fun ones. Um, so uh, there's assessments. Video marketing is probably coming out um, uh, up the top there. And I'm sure, Dave, you can give us some, some a lot more information about that than I possibly could. Uh, there's also online challenges. Uh, Tony Robbins ran a fantastic online challenge recently. And a lot of people are now offering free courses as a way to build trust, because if if uh, if there's a free course in the subject that you're interested in, then you're, you're actually going to decide whether you can trust that person, whether you like them, whether they're giving you the information you need. And then, of course, competitions, um, whether those are um, competitions where you enter or their awards. Um, I, I do personally, I feel the awards approach is being a little bit overplayed at the moment. Uh, but, the, you know, they are all things that get you noticed. They get you as part of a community and that from the community, you start making decisions. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Can I ask something? Yeah. Um, I know that you're very, you know, good with the kind of psychology behind all of this. Mm. And, and what you've outlined, you know, is obviously compelling. But what psychologically, when it's so obvious, do you think stops people, you know, embracing this new kind of digital normal? Well, it's fear. And uh, it's, it, it does depend very much on, as you say, the, um, the, the profiles of the personalities of the people. But they'll all have fears in different ways. And it, it's understanding your personality is then how do you address that fear? So if you're very much a detailed person, you ask the question, how? You're not going to be um, so good at the big picture, but you're going to be looking at the numbers. And, you're going, and so to, to embrace the new world, it's very much about knowing your numbers and, uh, and tracking your numbers and, um, and being able to see what's working and not working. If you're very visual, if you're a big picture person, then you're going to be looking at uh, what's working for other people, uh, what's attracting the, the numbers, and the people side. You know, you're going to you're going to be very attuned to um, listening to conversations about what's working and what's not working. But there are all ways that you have to. Uh, there are all ways of addressing the fear, and it's up to the individual to decide whether they're going to remain fear-based or they're going to, what, what's, the t what's the book? Um, feel the fear and do, do it, it anyway. anyway. 
Yeah. 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 Susan Jeffers classic. Yeah. Susan Jeffers. Well, yeah. Annie's yeah. all-time favourite book. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I we're... Think that, yeah, Jill, manifests itself in inertia as well, uh, in that yeah. people just don't want to change because it's just too much hassle. And I see that... Um, uh, from uh, from customer client side and, uh, and when you've taken through that change I think well why didn't we do this ages ago but it's just getting them over that line exactly and uh, that leads very nicely into the longevity one and uh, a cartoon that uh, that I found uh, Ian thank you for my introduction to that <laughs> and it is exactly that we most people are more comfortable with uh, with lying to themselves as much as you know the the lies that we we see out there um you know and there's not so many of us who actually want to face these unpleasant truths but i have a a strong conviction that uh people who belong to groups like the family business practice they're the ones who would actually change the change line and actually move into the unpleasant truths line and actually you know face the fear and do it anyway it's the um, you know, we've most of us have already taken that first step by going into business for ourselves. Uh, where we're going to see, I think, the most issue is with those uh, those people who've been in employment for a long time, or who only have one skill. Because uh, I mean, as we all know, running a business, uh, running our own business, is the business is the biggest personal development program you could ever take on so you know we're already we've already taken the blue pill as the uh, the matrix says whereas uh, you know so many people is the red pill they're uh, they're going to get in that line and uh, and and the next three to five years is going to be um you know very fearful for them so but uh, you know with the truth there there's we can look at it in two ways we can either look at it in the um, in the in the negative or the positive, and by looking at it in the positive, we we can actually um, we you know we, we we can take actions that are going to look after ourselves and our families, and obviously the number one um, is cash flow, um, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. If the cash flow runs out, then we then we're really in trouble, and that's what's happened with so many of the bigger organizations particularly that are going under is because they weren't managing their cash flow they were they were living for the moment uh, so also we we the truth is we need a plan that works for now we we don't you know all those plans those three-year plans uh, that we that people had they're just out the window and i think it was barry who did one session when we were still meeting um, about the 90-day plans, and if there's ever a time to have a 90-day plan, it's it's now, because um, the crash or the shift that's going to happen is probably going to be by the end of October. So we're in that last 90 days of uh, um, everyone putting their heads in the sand, if you like, um, before the reality is really going to start to hit. And that's why if we, if we can put a digital aspect to our business, that's going to be creating that remote revenue. And we can go after the areas um, of the world because not everybody's going to be you know, in recession. We have a large number of retirees who have fairly secure pensions, for instance, who are not going to feel um, the pinch as much as you know, the, the younger working families. Um, but I guess the one point that I really wanted to bring across um, about these truths is it's about leadership and leadership comes in many forms and we need to lead ourselves first before we try to lead others. Um, but our market will need leaders. It needs leaders and leadership is actually about solving problems. So the best thing that we can do is to really understand what our prospects, what our clients' problems are, know where they hang out and then demonstrate to them how we can solve that problem and how we, and the, the, the best technique is to uh, help others 
to be successful and then we will be successful ourselves. So if you take one thing away from today, it is what problems can you solve for um, in your market, in your industry? And I think um, we've got some great successes in the family business practice that have um, demonstrated that. Um, I'm thinking of Clare Hill for one um, and Keris. Um, you know, they've 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 got a wide range of skills, but they're very much focusing on helping uh, pe uh, businesses who have to make people redundant. So it's that's my number one. So, um, takeaway I'd like you to have is what problems can you solve for others that will then make yourself successful um, and with that you can build your community which is actually where your business will come from so I have a list of 16 action items which I'm not going to run through but I will certainly send them through to you uh, that uh, will help you prepare for the long winter um, and I think I must be nearing my time. So what I'd say is not about how big you can be, but how long can you remain? So to finish off, I'm going to pose you another question. This, this is just a hypothetical, but it's something that you might also want to think about. And what if you woke up tomorrow and there was no fiat currency left in the world? What would you do? Does anybody want to give me a, a thought on that one? What would you do if there was no, if there, if, because there's no point in going to work because you've got no money to earn as such. So you'd, you'd get into the whole barter culture, wouldn't you, of supporting exactly. each other? Exactly. So we'd get together as a community and we'd find the value that we can give to each other. So um, what would be different is we would focus on what, not on what we can get, but what we can give, because if we can give, then we can get something back. So it would change the whole mindset. Um, we'd also find a place for everyone because we would want, you know, we we would help each other to survive um, and trust would be the new currency. Uh, and with trust uh, flows, um, the more trust flows, the more it grows. And we would find all the tools and resources within our community that we need. And I think that what the really, what if that community is the family business practice? And that's why I was saying earlier that trust is the biggest commodity that we're going to have through these next three to five years. If we need tools, if we need resources, they're actually on our doorstep with the family business practice. And, and it's something I'd like to see us all um, focus on a lot more. It's how can we actually help each other within the group to be successful? 